Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Chapel coming to you live from downtown Hollywood, home of the world famous primetime shopping studios. I have some art here tonight. I got some coins that are absolutely Wilson. They're in this box. I'm not going to show them till seven o'clock. Oh, stunning. You got all one of these coins. If you're a coin collector, I'm going to show those at seven o'clock. I have everything tonight. I got Diani Pino. I got Schofield. I got an amazing Tarkai acrylic original. I got a Marcel Mooley. I got Captain America who's still punching at me. I have a very rare Royal. I have an Erte. Erte's real name was Roman de Tadoff. He was a he was born in Russia, right on the Hungarian border. Immigrated to Paris, then immigrated to New York, and lived to be like a hundred and one. I mean, I kept getting. He kept publishing books, Erte at 80, Erte at 90, Erte at 95, Erte, I believe he made it a little bit past 100, but I got everything tonight. I'll tell you what I want to start with, Ashley. Yes, sir. Using all the knowledge at your command yes, that you gained working on the art show, there are five abstract Michael Schofields right there. Okay. The abstract ones. The ones that Michael swears are going to be worth more when he's, than his, than his uh, traditional landscape, which has made him world famous and have sold for a billion dollars. Using all your knowledge at your command, of the large ones, pick the nicest one. The one that you go, Schofield nailed it. You got it probably. Bring it up here. And folks, I'm only doing this the first hour. Uh, this is an extra large Michael Schofield abstract piece. Michael Schofield is now 74 years old. And I don't want to be too hard on the guy. I like the guy. I call him the rascal. But you saw his ex. Hey. Yeah. Ashley, yes, I showed you his x rays. Not good. Not, I don't know. Michael, uh, he's a great guy. He's probably all right. He'll probably make it through the week. But uh, no, he's going to do fine. That's a mean thing to say, Wilson. Yeah. Wilson goes, I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah, no, he's, 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 he's good. as well as I know he's in good health. But look, this is an example of a Michael Schofield abstract original. It's not a one of 50. It's a one of a kind. And Ashley using all of the knowledge at her command and listening to Michael talk many times thinks this is the nicest abstract original. Now in 57 minutes, I get Dish Network. I got some amazing coins. I got all kinds of art, whether it's Diani Pino, Kaufman, Tarkai. Oh, look at that. A Marcel Mooley and a very rare hand embellished Royo. I got it all tonight, but here's what I'm gonna start with. This piece, Ashley. I want to shock people. Now, you know what I paid for this, right, Ashley? I do. All right. Now, I want to put up a price where every single person, inner or outer galactic viewer, you know, they could be way out there. Like, there's a lot of galaxies out there. Did you know that, Ashley? How many galaxies do you think there are? All right. What would you price this at, Ashley? What are you laughing at? Let me see. Let me see what you're... What? That's Patty? Yeah. That's her lover. 
That's Patty and her lover? Yeah. Let me see it. Patty, you're wearing no pants. <laughs> and this is Kastabi, Mark Kastabi. He painted this in 1993. Were you the model for this, Patty? Yeah. You wish. You notice Patty is, is like, I can't say anyone, butt naked in this. Yeah, you see that? Don't show it to the audience yet. Yeah, don't show it to the audience. So, knowing my cost on this, Ashley, knowing my cost. Hey, Ashley, Ashley, what's my cost on this? She's gazing at Patty's naked. Did, uh, did Mr. Did Mr. Kastabi pay you much for that gig? Yes. For this large. Now, Michael sold three of these. He told me he sold three of these. A triptych for $189,000. That doesn't amaze me. Michael Schofield has been one of the leading artists, especially in landscape. But... Eight or ten years ago, he just started painting more and more abstracts. I only have a few, but on this one, just to get the show rolling, what would be a price that nobody could say no to? Yeah, Schofield gets at least $35,000 for any abstract. He got $60,000 for his triptych. Ashley, what would be a price? on the internet only, that people could, they, they go, you know what? Ashley, using all the knowledge at her command, pick this piece out. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Now, Ashley, would you swear on a stack of Bibles there is no way I could buy this painting for anywhere near this, because watch this, $450 to open. She'd swear on the Bibles. I paid a lot more. 450 to open, $100 increments. I'm only going to do this on one painting just to get the show going. This is consumer. I am seeing who's watching me on the internet. How many people are watching me right now, Matt? And can the number be negative? All right, and that's a positive number. Okay, I do not have an open at $450. I can't believe it. No open once. I was only going to do this on one painting. And you can't call this painting back. It's, uh, you got to kind of do it right now. But no open twice. Fair and final no open on, oh, that's a beautiful original Tark guy. I'm going to go ahead and take this down, Ashley. We are verifying. Hi, folks. Open. We have the open. Who opened it? Mr. S. Thank you, Mr. S. We are at four hundred and fifty dollars. Welcome home. Say what now? Mr. S is back home. Well, welcome home. Where did he go? New Jersey. How many days was he gone? Too many. Too many. That's funny, Wilson. Correct me if I'm wrong. And Patty and Kiki, didn't Ashley just get back from New Jersey? <laughs> yeah. Extra happy. I don't know. She is extra happy. 
He sent you a thank you package. <laughs> I knew it. $450 going once. $450. Who are we verifying? Mr. A. Mr. A. Well, Mr. S, who might or might not have been accompanied to New Jersey by our very own Ashley, uh, and she does seem really happy, Mr. S. Four hundred and fifty going once. Oh, you got a bidder there or no? Twice. Verify. Verify. All right, I gotta verify. Mr. S or Ashley's going to get in trouble with somebody. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Ashley. Pick out the next nicest one. I'm going to, I don't want Mr. S to get mad. Even though I'm selling this at half of what. All in, all said, that is sold to Mr. S. Now, just because you hung up on somebody, grab the second in your opinion. I'm going to do one more because Ashley, Mr. S, she's too happy. I, no, no. I need another big Schofield. I'm only going to do this one more time. And I hope you're out there. I got a heck of a show. I got some coins tonight. Yeah, bring that up there. Bring up Abraham Lincoln. Um... This, Matt Jackals believes that he can see Abraham Lincoln in this picture. All right, Patty, outline. All right, you outline it. Come on, come on up here. No, come on up here. You started it. Come on up here. This is Patty. She is going to outline Yes, that first one's gone. I'm going to honor this price. Uh, 450 to open. Item number is BC2 cheap. No, the item number, I don't see the item number. There is no item number. It was done in... Um, what's the item number on this? We should just call it Abraham Lincoln. I can't see Abe. I'm the only one. Can you see Abraham Lincoln in this? I don't see Abe. It could be what? You think this is Bono? What's that? Oh, that's the mate to this one? Yeah, 2411. All right, let's put up 2411. And if, and if somebody buys the other one, I'll work them a deal on the mate. This is 2411. Now. Matt, I don't disagree with you at all, but what do you see in this painting? Really, Matt? I don't see that, Matt. Do you see what Matt sees, Wilson? 
Yeah. For this and that one, I'll tell you what, I'm going to, and who is it? Mr. A. Mr. A. All right, both of these two I appear, appear are gone. They're both gone. All right, well, thank you, Mr. A. I am going to pull up this one, just because it reminds me. Did he buy the pair? Yes. Is that a yes? Hi, did you buy the pair? Does he want the pair? There's the camera. This is the stair. Does he want both of them? Oh. Yeah, I want to switch this. Because my dad, uh, who is no longer with us, he had a painting. My mom owned an art gallery in Indianapolis, Indiana a long time ago. And my dad had an office and he had a painting behind his desk that had a lot of black and gray. And the artist's name was Hunter Wasser. And Hunter Wasser was abstract uh, like this. And somebody asked my dad, why do you keep that behind your desk? Do you ever hang it on the wall? And my dad said, only if I get too happy. <laughs> this is a dark painting. And Wilson, I know you've been battling a lot of mental issues due to all of the uh, acid you took as a young man. Would this, I don't want you to get, don't get scared of this painting, Wilson. Was it acid? Three or four. Three or four. Yeah, first it was two, three, four. I, this is a very bizarre abstract Schofield. I am going to open this up for $400. First bidder who wants it at 400 to open. In case you ever have. 204 what? Oh, 2046. Now, this painting should only be sold to someone that has bouts of mania where they're just too happy. I'm joking, but. What do you see in this painting as I psychologically uh, ass uh, assess Matt? Matt, what do you see in this painting? You're saying rage? Patty sees rage in it. This is an abstract Michael Schofield. Hands down, he is one of the greatest landscape artists of our generation. He's in the Smithsonian. He is in the billion dollar Arm and Hammer collection. He's in the Library of Congress collection. And I am starting this at $400 to open. And then I'm going to be moving on to some other art. I just wanted to make everybody happy because I No open once. Yeah, those are all the big ones. No open twice. All right, let's. 
yeah, let's take this down. No open on this. This one is a little bit more. I had to pay him a lot more because this was hanging on his wall for a year and a half. He loved this painting. Michael said I nailed this one. No, it's 2049. He painted this 2022. He loved this painting. He almost didn't sell this painting to me. He said, Barry, I nailed this one. He, and he, he almost didn't sell me this one. This was hanging on his wall. And he said, all right. All right, I'll tell you what. This is a major Schofield abstract. $700 to open. It is stunning. Michael gets 20,000 plus for paintings like this. It was one of his favorite paintings and he hung it on his own wall. And I had made a deal to buy eight paintings. He only had seven, so he took it off his own wall. If anybody's interested in this Michael Schofield, Did they want to see one we had already had up? No, they were just making a comment on this black and gray one. What'd they say? Oh, you can tell, that's a good thing about abstract. You can. I just pointed out looking at it from the face and I see it now. All right, no open on this one. Yeah. What are we opening this one? Oh, 400? No, this one. This one's 700. It was eight, make it seven. I had to pay a lot more for this and Michael really nailed this piece. This is one of the prettiest abstracts I've ever seen Michael paint. Do we have the open? Hey, Ashley. Yes, this is still available. Oh, my goodness. I am going to take this one down. And I am going to... Move this one. Does he want to open on this or? Uh, okay. Sell it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that other one, the uh, black and gray is sold. Thank you. Nobody opened on this one. Uh, Kiki, can I hand you this? Because I want to show something really cool here. This guy was the king of what was known as Art Deco. He signs his name Erte, one letter from each of his four names. His real name is Roman de Tatov, and he immigrated from Russia uh, to New York, New York, uh, I'm sorry, Russia to Paris, Paris to New York, and Erte uh lived a very long life i think he died at a hundred or something close to that uh, there's my air tape book yeah he started out 
He died. No, he only made it to 98. 1892 to 1990. That's a picture of Verte. He, some of the most famous costumes ever created for Broadway and for movies was Erte. You know, here are some of the most famous costumes and people that he, I know the one on this side is a very famous actress. The two top actresses are very famous. I don't know who they are, but that was Costumes designed by Erte. To this day, they still sell Erte jewelry on cruise ships and in gift shops. Erte, in about 1980, he published the Alphabet. And the Alphabet went for huge money. People were buying A's, trading them for B's, and so on. Here is, here is an Erte original, Palace, uh, Lido Paris at night, 156,300 for an original. This is a silk screen. This is number 24 of 300. To give you an idea, here is an Erte gauche. I used to own quite a few myself. I got them from the Erte Museum here in Los Angeles. Uh, years ago, they would, they would they, you know, they would offer them up, but you had to have cash on the barrel. There's a Gauche original for 24,000. But here is a serigraph, and that is what he normally did. Here is an Erte called Golden Cloak. Same size as this, same everything as this, and they want 12500 I printed that eight years ago. Here is another Erte serigraph right here. 15000 sold-out edition by Roman de Tartoff, otherwise known as Erte. I owned the original. I, I owned, uh, there were five in this suite, or four, three. I owned one of the three, and I sold it a long time ago. Sold it too cheap, but... Uh, the whole suite together at one point was 118,800. Those are original gouache. This is probably, it's deceptive, but I would say at least a 12 color silk screen. And I think the retail on it is 17.5 right now in any of the air tape books. He was a very interesting guy. And, you know, some of his larger pieces, no, some of his pieces like Arctic Sea, limited edition, retail 15, asking 12,500. Here is a picture of Erte at one of the gallery shows. But if you ever visit L.A., there is the Erte Museum. I don't know if it's still open, but it was a while ago. <coughs> Retail 15000 What did I pay for this, Ashley? Because... Yeah, oh. I remember... Uh, 92 I had a watch guy, a jewelry guy named Chuck Catarabac. And down in San Diego, they were pestering, did you ever find an air tao? Oh, no, I didn't. You know, I couldn't. I mean, I just, this was 
uh, Erte at the ball. It was land auction for twelve oh five for Park West, I believe, but I can't verify that for sure. Yeah, they would. Uh, you know, they they're probably going to get twelve to fifteen thousand unframed. But here's what I'm going to do. Give some. That's a fifteen thousand dollar retail. And you would be amazed when you see an edition like this, probably done. This is an edition of 300, number 24 or 300. You got a perfect Erte signature. Of those 300, I'd be, I'd be surprised if there's 120 still left. Some of them got damaged, weren't framed right. Uh, people bought them and didn't frame them or put them in just um, paper frames, uh, awful. So, of the 300, I'd be surprised if there's 150s left, and this is in mint condition. Tell you what, 15,000 retail, probably 17.5, but I haven't looked at the Airte price guide in a long time. Tell you what I'm going to do $1,200 to open. That's too cheap. $1,200 to open, $100 increments. Like, Ashley, if you type in Erte and that title, I'll bet you'll see one for $20,000, $22,000, but I don't know. That's too cheap. And this is called At the Ball. I heard a phone t chime. Oh, and folks, if you're coin collectors at 7 o'clock, I got must-buy coins. No open on this. What do I have it up for? I got to put my... Yeah, I got no, I'll tell you what, uh, I got no room, but somebody wants to open it for a thousand, I can do that. Thousand to open, and perfectly framed, it, and the title is At the Ball. At the Ball, yeah, you got that. He did this in 1981. In August. You know what happened in August of 1981, Patty? I turned 20. No open on this. Okay, I am going to move this aside for now. And what I do want to show you, I think you're going to be all over it. But I could be wrong. Tell you what, Ashley. I got an acrylic on paper by Schofield right over there. Yeah, right there. Let's put that up real fast because then I'm going to change direction. Right. That was Ashley's head. <laughs> that one, yeah. Here is one Michael Schofield that is unusual for me. Uh, he's usually oil on canvas, and let me hand you the Erte. This right here is acrylic on paper. Where is it? Oil on paper. Oil on paper. And look what Michael wrote on the back. One of my favorite images, memories, one of my favorite 
memories. And when he puts that, he is actually there somewhere, saw it, stood there, probably painted it. And yeah, this is, uh, you know, a Michael Schofield original. Uh, so here's what I'm gonna do, yeah, this at least. And he is retired, he quit painting. With the inscription on the back, signed on the front, signed on the back as well. Let's do this. And that is beautiful, look at those C's. Oh man, this is a $25,000 Schofield. He's retired. Tell you what I'm gonna do. For everybody watching, it's early bird special. This is an original Michael Schofield. Oil on paper. It's perfect too. 2,000 to open. I've never sold one that cheap. Oil by Michael Schofield. 24 by 36. 26 by 36, 2,000, oh, that's too cheap. Look at that. Those greens are mesmerizing. And those blues, there's probably 15 different shades of blues in this. This is one of the nicest seascapes I've ever seen Michael paint. I'm sitting here in awe of this. Looking at a monitor about 15 feet away from me going, whoa. That, people, you know, he's in the billion dollar Arm & Hammer collection. Library of Congress, the Smithsonian. All right. Wilson, who took my phone? It was right here. I'm getting, I'm getting mad at that. You got my phone? Yeah. It's been doing that lately. It's just been walking away. Oh, there it is, yes. <laughs> you see how quick she hit it there and put it back, Wilson? <laughs> All right. No open on the Michael Schofield original. That's all right. Nobody? At two grand? Hey, two grand and I'll frame it up for you. I'll frame it and pay shipping at two, two grand. And that, those blues in there, Michael got lost in this. And he signed on the back, one of my favorite memories. No takers. I know what I'm gonna sell next. Okay. Here, hmm, what would you sell next? Would you try, uh, pick something, Ashley. Hand me the Mark Estabi. Now, according to Ashley and then the reaction from Patty, that is Patty. Two, three, five, seven. Mark Kastabi is a very famous abstract artist. See how the red makes a little heart around him on the top? And Mark Kastabi's go for a lot. 
four to seven thousand for um, signed and numbered. Uh, I'm curious. He put a date on this, 1993, right? And it is. Now, I don't know, I don't want any kids out there to get mad at me, but Patty in the piece is naked. And who is that anonymous? I believe a man carrying you off with a heart. That is true. Before the show, Patty went up to the 15th floor, which is hard to do. I got locked on that 15th floor in 1992, Patty. Yes, I was smoking back then. And the brick came away from the door. And I had to ask people at the phone bank, which is in my mom's gallery, to call somebody at the studio and tell them to let Barry in. Yeah. I didn't get locked out. You didn't get locked out? No. But you were taking pictures of the moon. I was taking pictures of the moon. And you got a good picture of the moon and Mars. I did. Is Mars still there, you think? Or did you? Yeah. It's a what? A Mars eclipse? Right now? And Patty says that's what they're doing. They're joining. I'll tell you what. This is like $45 or $5,500. Kastabi. I've never seen him date a piece like that. What's my... Yeah. Started zero, $100 increments. That is a cool Kastabi. He has gained such a great reputation. Like I said, I've never seen him. He signed it, he numbered it. But then he also put the date on it, which I don't, I've never seen him do that. Mark Kastabi. And who took you up to the 15th floor? <laughs> it's pretty cool up there, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I got locked out there. Keystone Communications used to be on the 14th floor. So I'd run out of the studio, go up there and have a cigarette. And I don't smoke anymore. I've been chewing nicotine gum since my son was born 26 years ago. No open on a $5,000 Mark Estabi where we believe Patty is the model. $100. And I got to say it, Patty. Yowza, 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 hubba, hubba, hubba. Oh, what did he say? Yes, he said that this is called fencing. Me and my partner. Fencing? Oh, that's what he's going to call it. Fencing. Okay, but I'm only at $100. I paid so much more, it's a $5,000 print. But let's see what happens. It's already been opened. Yeah. 200. This is a $5,000 Kastabi. 300 has been bid. Hey, uh, he says it looks like Patty. Oh, 
Oh, that is so nice. He said, if it looks like Patty, it's worth it. Well, getting a Kastabi at $300 worth it, but it does look, Pat, Patty claims she was a model. 400 has been bid. And Patty, cla Patty claims. You're at five now. No. Uh, we're at 400. 400 going once. 400 going twice. Fair. And final warning. All in. All said. Sold. That is gone. All right. Now, I was trying to hold off on this. This is a Jose Royo. This is BC 2350. It is a custom framed Jose Royo. But that is not what is so important about this piece. What is so important about this Royo right here is Jose Royo himself hand embellished this piece. It's a HC Haus de Commerce otherwise known as friend of the artist. He only did six of these. Only did six. That is pastel, the blues, the copper colors, all in the face. And just to give you an idea what Jose Royo goes for, he keeps going up and up and up. This is Mediterraneo. I used to sell that at that price in 2014. That was 9,000, it's now 18.5. Here's a piece right here by Royo El Campo that in 2014 you could have bought for 8,500, it's now 19,500. A silk screen. This right here, Adorno La Mesa. Did I say that right? Right there. 8,000, it's probably closer to 12, 13, 14. But I want to show you something here. The regular edition sold out long time ago. The panel edition, there were 225 of. And those sold out long time ago for $4,500. Now, as impressive as that is, this is rarer than the panel edition because Jose Royo took six pieces. He wrote HC, Haus de Commerce, Friend of the Artist, and on those six pieces, he totally pastelled it. The Jose Royo. The world famous Jose Royo. So the retail on something like this is going to be closer at least to 8,500. There's only six that he hand embellished with pastel.
Hey, dear. This is second to none. This is probably eight to ten thousand, if not more. Jose Royo is a Spanish master painter. His originals, some of his originals are a million dollars. Seven, eight hundred thousand. I got chased in 2005. I got chased out of a Las Vegas gallery because I was taking pictures of the prices. And a guy, a big guy, I mean big guy, 6'6", six, six, you know, was kind of pushing me out the door. And I said, it's all right, you don't take me a picture of it because I'm going to talk about you anyway. I already took a picture of your gallery side. I even got a picture of you. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is rare. This is beef tartare rare. Here's what I can do. Oh, this is rare. Only six. Completely hand embellished by Jose Royo. 2500 to open, $200 increments. That's as close to getting an original Royo as I have come across to date. I've only sold a couple of originals and they went for a ton of money. This is number two of only six. Completely hand embellished by Jose Royo. That would be a steal. Yeah, if it wasn't hand embellished, it'd still be 4,500. This is completely hand embellished by Jose Royo. Okay. Ashley, oh, can you hand me the largest Royo I have right there? Oh, this is heavy, too. That is a heavy frame. This. Got it? I got it. Two, three, five, one. No, 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 no. This is 2351. <laughs> this Royo. What is the title of this Royo? It's called Soul. Soul. Soul is hand embellished in pastel by Jose Royo, number 80 of 85. You talk about a low edition by Jose Royo, and this is a large piece. And I found a comp on this piece from many, many years ago. Retail price unembellished, it was done in 2002, was $3,000. Unembellished, right there, $3,000. Being embellished by Jose Royo is going to be at least 5000 It's got lucky numbers too. Look at that. 80 of 85. Five. Tell you what. $1,200 to open.
That is a beautiful pasteled Royo. That is something. Yeah, that's pastel put on by Jose Royo. Oh, I got some art coming up. I got some coins coming up. I got to show this once. So, Wilson, this cracks me up. The, uh, the top covers of Time Magazine are in the 70s when I grew up. And look what it says. The coming freeze. The new ice age. Yeah. See those? When I grew up, everybody was telling us, we're going in an ice age. Did they tell you that, Patty? Yeah. We're going to freeze to death. We're not going to have enough electricity and energy. Everything's going to be frozen over. Then you get to the bottom of those six pictures. Arctic melt, 2000. Global warming, 2001. 2002, special edition, how to save the earth. I just thought that was funny. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take this. Patty, could you grab this one? I'm just going to put this one up right here. This is on canvas, too. This is Steve Kaufman. Oh, this is rare. S.A.K. is Steve Kaufman. This is number one of 30 printers proof. Steve Kaufman worked in Andy Warhol's studio. Steve Kaufman moved to LA and Steve Kaufman was a great guy. He died a little young, I believe, of a heart attack. But I just want to show you something. Steve Kaufman was concerned with gang members because as a teen, he had been in a gang. So when he moved to L.A., he only hired ex-gang members. People needed to be reformed. And, they, and he taught them how to silk screen. And this of Maryland, I want to show you something cool. Because this is on canvas. And look on the back up there. S-A-K. That's how he signed his work. Number one. Of 30 or 50 printer's proofs. Right there. Now Steve Kaufman was a big guy. He was on the Tonight Show. Steve Kaufman, uh, because of all of his charities, he gave to over 50 different charities, all supporting Holocaust survivors, uh, so supporting gang members. But here is Steve Kaufman with B.B. King when he unveiled his tribute to B.B. King.
Here is Steve Kaufman with a younger Bruce Willis. There's Bruce Willis, there's Steve Kaufman. Hello, Dish Network. I got a heck of a show. I'm selling one Steve Kaufman, number one. He was a great pop artist. He died of a heart attack. He gave to over 50 different charities. Um, Holocaust survivors, gang charities to reform gang kids. Uh, he was on the Tonight Show, and there's a picture of Steve Kaufman with Bruce Willis. Now, just so you know, this is number one of the printer's proofs of Marilyn. He worked with Andy Warhol a long time ago. And just to show you, and because I got some coins I cannot wait to show, I just want to show you what his signed and numbered work went for. I'm going to auction this off, but take a look at this. Here's an original Steve Kaufman Spider-Man Juggernaut. Look at that. On eBay for $495,000 in 2015. Here is Steve Kaufman, an original oil. Look at that. I printed this in 2010 for 250000 Steve Kaufman was a pop artist. And he supported over 50 different charities before he died. This was done in 2003. They wanted 125000 but for, and those are originals, but I want to show you something. Here is a serigraph. Here is one right here, American Gothic, done by Steve Kaufman, 14800 plus shipping on eBay. Here is Einstein. Look at that, 12000 Printed that in 2014. Here's the cheapest one I could find, the State 1 Venus that they had up for 7200 on eBay. The one I'm showing you is number one. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. On the number one, Steve Kaufman. Hey, you guys tell me. Here's what I'm going to do. Oh, look at this. Here's one just like mine. Same thing. Look at that. Different colors. No frame. They wanted $12,475 in 2015. Tell you what I'm going to do. Ashley, what am I in this? Steve Kaufman. Tell you what, this is about at least a $14,000 Kaufman. Uh, born and raised in Brooklyn. He built an AIDS memorial. He underground artist of the year. 23 sold out editions. Work for Andy Worrell. Independent filmmaker. Uh, supports 170 charities. He created the September 11th monument Memorial. He created a 10-foot guitar for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Worked on the World War II Memorial. Donated uh, the Princess Diane portrait to the Elton John Foundation. He's, he was a giver. He died. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I got fifteen, eighteen thousand dollar comps on this, and mine is number one. You got to put up number one printer's proof. 
started zero $200 increments. That is a very rare Steve Kaufman. When you get number one printer's proof, sign, he signed all of his works on the back, S-A-K. And to have number one, that is beef tartare. That's raw red meat right here. I'm starting at zero. $200 increments. Oh, I got some coins for my coin collectors. I got some coins. Number one. Oh, this is crazy. I'm going to take this down before. You know, Ashley, I need seven or eight bids, so... I don't want to offend anybody, but zero, no open, going once. And I'm going to run. Like, what movie was that? All I need is my ashtray. What, what movie was that? Oh, you know. Ah. Steve Martin, the jerk. Open, 200. Are you sure? We got open for 200. Did they get that in time, Patty? Because I was going to run with this. Just like Steve Martin and the jerk. Do you remember what he called his dog in the jerk? Good. We're at 200 looking for four. His dog had a very unusual name. I have to turn my mic off to tell the operators. Are, where are we at? 400. 400. Chopper got it, yeah. 400. Oh, come on, folks. I can't buy this. This is number one. They're $15,000. How much? 600. They're 15 grand online. But I become the Rodney Dangerfield of auctions. Oh, I got a couple really nice Royos hand embellished. But right now I am at 600 looking for eight. 800 has been bid. 800 looking for a thousand. We're at 800 looking for a thousand. 800 going once 800 what <laughs> Ashley's got the eight Kiki do they want to go to a thousand all right 800 once that's cheap Patty you got anybody twice sold Ooh, that went cheap I got one more Steve Kaufman, then I'm going to show you some coins that will, whew. I mean, they, they ain't coins, and there's coins, and then there's tonight's coins. Oh, you think, what happened to the assisting part? Number one of 200, S-A-K, number one of 200. The first one, number one of 200. Look at that. Item number on this, BC2354, number one of the edition. By the late Steve Kaufman. What year did Steve Kaufman die? I will ascertain that from my phone. What year did he die? 2010. Donated to over 70. No, how many did it say? Charities? Unbelievable guy. Folks, this is number one. 
I got comps here of 22,000 for this edition. And I have number one. Retail is 22,000, Matt. He also painted, uh, he, he, he won the Picasso, first American artist to win the Picasso ring. Uh, recreated Racial Harmony mural. 23 sold out editions. It's number one of the editions. Supported 170 different charities. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Do I, how, do I have enough people to auction this, Asher? Are they going to beat me with a stick? I love your optimism. <laughs> Not only did she say, Wilson, they'll beat me with a stick, but she said, I'm going to take the second swig. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll tell you what. This is this is um, uh, this is unbelievable. <sighs> Ashley, what did I pay? I don't want to know what I paid. What did I pay for this? But don't tell me. Is it going to upset me? It's going to upset me. All right. I want to be fair to everybody. <sighs> Started zero. Two hundred fifty dollar increments. You got a $25,000 piece of art, and you got number one, the first one of this edition. One of 200. The first one. That's the last Steve Kaufman I have. His artwork is harder than hard to get a hold of. It is in more celebrity houses than you could imagine. Look at this, some of these trademarks. You got trademark from the Marilyn Monroe estate, James Dean, Frank Sinatra, Elvis, Jimi Hendrix. I mean, this guy is in every celebrity. Bruce Willis, big fan. B.B. King, the late B.B. King. This is rare. Number one. of 200. We have the open at 250. Folks, this is a $25,000. Steve Kaufman, I mean, he is in so many museums and to get the first one he did of this edition, right there, number one of 200. S A K K. Number one. Five hundred has been bid. We're at five. Folks, this is a twenty-five thousand dollar Kaufman. I haven't seen this image. In, 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 I, this is one of the first, second one I've ever had of this image. And to get number seven fifty has been bid. Folks, they're killing me tonight. This is a $25,000 piece. It's your fault, Ashley. All right. What do they say to you, Ashley? Is your bidder... $750 looking for a 1000 1000 has been bid. This is a $25,000 work of art. It's number one of the edition. The second one I ever got in my life. I'm at $1,000. Going once. What? Nice. Sold. Now. Come on over here. Wilson, you know what I got in this box? What? So that one, yeah, fix it, yeah. Yeah, okay. I want to show you something. 
I have five of them. I'm going to show you four. And I got a very, very, very rare St. Gaudens here. Now, I don't know if you can, uh, Patty, you took a picture of this in the light box, right? Okay, well, here's what I am going to do. Wilson, I want you to come over here. Take a look at that. What does that say, Wilson? It says 1913D, PCGS MS64. Now, if you look right around the date, the 1913, you'll see a little D on the front of the coin there, the obverse. Can you see the little D, Wilson? Yeah, right there. Yes. Oh, that's a clear D. It's right over the date. Look at that. Folks, this is a coin that separates coin collectors from everybody else. I want to show you something here, folks. Do you know how many 1913 Ds they minted? They minted, you know, I think 18 million of the 1924s, but I, I got to double check that. This is one of the lowest minted coins you're going to find. And I'm going to put this one. Just like, well, I don't even need to put that one up there. A total minage of 393,500. That is it. 393,500. And I want you to get in on this because I had to fight like heck. Now, NGC population reports are showing that the 1913D is less than 1% of the 1924s, graded in 6, 4. The 1913D is less than 1% graded in 6, 4 compared to 1924, making this one of the rarest coins I have ever had on the show. Folks, and I got a price for you that you're going to go get out of here. just want to show you something here. Ashley printed this up before the show. I had no idea what she was going to find. Here on eBay at 7800 a very reputable seller. Right there, Wilson. 1913D, $20, PCGS, MS, 64, St. Gaudens, Double Eagle. They want $7,800, and that's not even expensive. I, no, D stands for Denver. Now, I prefer with gold in the teens, and I don't want to get anybody mad at me at NGC because they did give me the award in 2011 for the finest proof uh, uh, Morgan set. But 
I prefer PCGS when it comes to gold, usually. Here is an NGC comp on a 1913D in 6.5, and they want 6,750. Without seeing the coins hands down, I tend to lean towards PCGS at the 7,800. I only have four. Put that up. List price off the PCGS where website is $7,800. That's off their website. List price, $7,800. Now, I'm not going to charge you that. You're not going to believe. I only have four. I cannot get any more. <laughs> I had to fight and fight and fight to get these four coins. You can pick which one of the four you want. They're all graded MS64 PCGS. I got a price that I don't think anybody on TV could ever beat. And let me move this one over. I know you're on the ledge there. Ooh, don't knock your friend off. Because I got to get one more up here. There they are, Wilson. You're not going to believe this. I can't say it, it's so cheap. I only have four. If you want one of these, and Melvin, you need one of these, so many other customers that collect coins need this, $4,485. $4,485 on the ultra rare 1913D. They only meant it 393,500. Compare that to the 1928 with 18 million coins. You're talking 393,500. So few of them made it to gem condition. <coughs> These got packed, not put by hand. Machines put them in canvas bags on trains in Denver. And they went up to South Dakota and North Dakota and they went over. Now I only have four. I don't know if you ever want to put away a rare gold coin. The price on US gold, St. Gaudens is going ballistic. And I had to fight like you wouldn't believe to get four of them. That is a deal of the night, the week, the month, the year. You're not going to find them any cheaper. And to be able to get one of these for 4400 I just doesn't make any sense. Look at that. They are beautiful. How close can you come in on the little D? Stunning. In 1913, $20 would buy you a whole lot. Gold right now is right around 1,800 an ounce, but the value of this is not that it's 1,800 an ounce. The value is they only meant at 393,500. <clears throat> and I would say 80% of those are lucky if they're even in fine condition or extra fine condition. If you put this in your pocket in 1913 and carry it around in your pocket for a day or two, it would be about uncirculated. Wouldn't even get the MS60 which means a guaranteeing it unc, uncirculated. 
Five graders at PCGS had to look at these and they took the lowest consensus grade. And in this case, they graded them Mint State 6-4. Brilliant uncirculated. This is as good as it gets in the world of coins. Somebody's going to be all over this. Who are our biggest coin collectors? Ashley, who, who is? Because remember how quick I sold out the 1925 and 66. Sold all of those. This is a 1913 Denver Mint. The Denver Mint was notorious in the teens of having ugly strike coins. That's why to find a 1913D in this kind of condition is unbelievable. Many of the coins in San Francisco in the teens were shipped to Central American banks and South America, but Denver be put on a days of a train ride in a canvas bag and to end up 108 years later, 108, let's see, 1913, 2013, 109 years later, and be able to grade Brilliant Uncirculated. Do you have anybody, Ashley? Because these are the rare of the rare. Yeah, this is such an amazing deal. It's so rare. I, I, I just couldn't believe... What? Gary, okay. This is the rare of the rare. 1913D from Denver. PCGS graded. MS64. The Denver Mint was notorious for bad strikes. And we got this off of PCGS's website, or someone associated with them, where they want $7,800 for the 1913D. They only minted 393,500 coins. And if you use the NGC pop reports, the NGC POP reports, NGC POP reports show that the 1913D is less than 1% of the 1924. Because I only have four, and we might be selling two right now. And they are stunning. It's funny because I waited around when I was getting these for hours. Um, it, it just, they're stunning. And let me know when they're gone. One's gone. Okay. I am down to three left. And folks, miss this. This is a coin. Another one's gone. Thank you. This is a coin that they want 7800 for everywhere. This is the type of coin. I can't promise it, but I can tell I can see how a coin like this goes up to 18, 20,000 fast. The mintage was so low, the mint was not the best at striking them. Two are gone. I have two left.
Yeah. That is what you want. I mean, and look at this. Augustus St. Gaudens, you start, they started mending St. Gaudens in 1907. One of the most expensive coins is the 1907 high relief. I've owned several. Unfortunately, Augustus St. Gaudens died before he could see the finished 1907. Look at the back of this 1913D. Sun rising on America, in God we trust. Look at that, that is. And every MS64 I pick, if I didn't think that should be a 64 plus or a 65, I don't pick them. I have been very accurate at that. So I have. This one? Okay. Bring the other coin back. I still have two. Uh, hand me the other one. I gave it to you already. Yes, I'm sure. I handed it to you. No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, now you got two at your desk right now well I just handed you this oh All right there oh, hang on let me hang on what the heck happened to one of them Here, take that one. All right. So I have two left, but Ashley, there's one more. No, those aren't the dates. Oh, there it is. You are right. As always, I am down to two. Last two. 1913 D. Hey, she had it in her hand. <laughs> All right. Did, did they buy one? Oh, uh, we're waiting for Gary. Is who's on the phone? So that one's gone. Okay, two are gone. Folks, I don't know what to tell you, but if you had to get a coin, the 1913D, I have been negotiating for the better part of three weeks on getting some 1914Ds in MS64. It's been dead end dead end dead end they want so much more and you're talking about a coin that they only minted three hundred ninety three thousand five hundred and the statistic that I saw when looking this coin up just blew me away is NGC population report reports that less that the 1913D is less than one percent of the 1924. So in other words, NGC has graded 99 percent more 1924s than 1913D. That is a rare, rare, rare coin. I gotta move along, but if you're on the fence over this. I wouldn't be because this is as good as it gets. Here is a coin you might be interested in. And I'd be buying coins. Folks, I'm only guessing from 32 years on TV. 
You ain't seen nothing yet. The show hadn't even started. Anybody that thinks inflation is contained, oh, this is a 1927 in MS65. I picked this coin because it's got that gold patina to it. That's what a gold 1927 looks like. The item number on this, it should be Ashley on our PCGS MS65 1927 and MS65. What's the item number on that? I'd be buying gold coins all day long. I mean, I'll tell you, it's only my opinion. I can't guarantee anything, but I think the, the rocket, it, what, what, what number? 23, 23. 23, 23. <laughs> uh, what did I have 23, 23 up for? I mean, I put this up at $2,855 for a 1927. You didn't let me. Well, you just let me do it right now. That is a beautiful coin. Folks, where I'm standing in the world, uh, I, I think you would be amazed at what's coming down the pike. And I, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody. So don't get me wrong. But is, I, I don't want to get it and see mean, Patty. But we got morons at the steering wheel. We got people that don't understand, couldn't understand, couldn't predict anything. They can't even change the calendar to the right date. I mean, these people, anyway, here's another one. At $2,855, I'd get one of those as fast as you can. My guess is, just a guess, but I'm pretty good at this. My guess is, Uh, within four years, three years, you're going to see gold at 3,200 an ounce. And you're going to see the rarer of the coins just take off. I watched it happen. He did. Oh, let me show you the next best thing I can show you. Ah, and I got some more art. I got some great art. So, and I actually even got me a picture. This... Hey, I did it. That actually worked out, Wilson. Great job. Yeah. You know how I did that? Mental telepathy. We were supposed to, but uh, we'll get to the bottom of it. I thought I, I, I had uh, 50 Morgan dollars, but we'll have them next week. Helvetia Gold. Uh, and what is the item number on the 20... Hey, Patty, what's the item number on the 20 francs Swiss Helvetia? I only have four of them. It 
2078. That's uh This is a 20 franc Swiss coin. Two two one one. Those are AU. A lot of times, and we had a picture of her last week. What they'd have at emergency kits for uh, pilots for aviators fighting over Europe in World War II. They had nine carat rings. They had British sovereigns, Swiss francs, if they needed to barter after being shot down. Hey, what's for her last time because the these are getting harder and harder to replace that's point that's oh one oh one one eight of an ounce oh, uh, Point one eight seven of an ounce. We had them up for $459. Grab them while you can. If you don't own any gold, you're going to want to. And that is just a beautiful example of one of the most valuable Swiss gold. What? Yeah, I, know. I lowered these all the way down to four hundred nineteen dollars. Yeah. Don't correct me. <laughs> all right, I only got three of them. Four hundred nineteen dollars. And then I'm going to show you something that everybody. Can I hope at least get one? I'm happy I have two uh, 1913 D's left. That is a coin of the decade. All right, let me let me show you one more thing. Then I got an original Turk guy here. I got all kinds of good stuff. Look at this. This is a tenth of an ounce. Canadian maple leaf. What is the item number? 1 tenth of an ounce. Uh, yeah, it's because the glare of the gold. I'm fixing it right now. I have random 10th ounce gold here. And look at this. That's one tenth of an ounce of gold. Most of them are Canadian. One tenth ounce. Twenty-two or twenty-four. It's a tenth of an ounce total gold weight. So uh what did I have these up for, Ashley? Let me see if I can find the item number in it. One tenth pure ounce of gold. What's that? Is there a year? No. It yeah, um, let me just see. I believe these are, no, these are random one tenth ounce gold coins. Most of them are Canadian polar bears. Here's a. Here, grab one.
We had them up last show. Yeah. And yeah, I'll tell you what, these What's the item number? Two three three five. Folks, the smaller the denomination, the higher the premium when it comes to gold. They got the same security. They got to make the same plates to print, well, print, no, not printing, to stamp the gold. And because they're smaller, the plates wear out a lot faster. So you got a lot of the same cost. But let me rephrase that. When you look at different types of gold, the smaller denominations carry huge premiums. Um, what we get on to some art. I got a lot of great stuff here. I can't believe I still have two 1913 Ds left. $279, grab one. You will not believe uh, the premiums on small gold. That's a tenth of an ounce. I hope you're out there. I am still amazed I have two 1913 Ds left, but a hey. Give those to your kids for Christmas. If they're anything like I was, they will be asking their mom and dad every day to check the newspaper, what's gold at, go on the internet, what causes the price of gold to go up, when's the next Fed meeting, whatever. And at $279, they are brand new, uh, 2020 minted. 10th ounce gold coins. You got random countries. You got Canada. Switzerland. You got a lot of countries there. At Well, give us some thought. Wilson, get me over here. Have you ever, Wilson, in your travels? Yeah, come on over here to me. Have you? There I am. You ever been to India, Wilson? I'm going to go here in 2023. I am going to the Berry Chapel Methodist High School in Chandrakal, India. I did not want my name on it. I'm proud to have my name on it, but I raised the money for that on Thanksgiving night. At my old company, Art and Coin, um, every Thanksgiving I would make every vendor donate stuff and I would donate the airtime. And we raised enough money one year to build this high school. The picture on the other side, Wilson, is what the high school looked like before we built it. It was nothing. And right here, we raised enough money to build it. And the people at Children's Inc. were so nervous to tell me that a very nosy nun at the school went online and found out who raised the money. And without asking me, 
they've made, they named it the Berry Chapel Methodist High School. So in 2023, I'm going to go there. Uh, I, it's not that I'm not proud of it. I'm damn proud of it. I just didn't want it to be about me. I wanted to help kids. And the most amazing thing is about 50 miles away, we raised enough money I, with donations that I raised to build a girl's dormitory that was utterly dilapidated. Uh, and I think Rotten, Rotan, uh, India. But anyway, this is in South Central India. I am going to go there in 2023 and pay them a visit, Ashley. All right. This is still available? So this didn't sell? Oh, okay. This is still available. Well, now, folks, hands down, I couldn't believe. Mm. Baby steps, baby steps. What movie with Bill Murray is Baby Steps in? You know Bill Murray? He ends up on Good Morning America and damn near kills Richard Dreyfuss. Um, this is one of the greatest pieces of art I have gotten, period. There's, there's no third and fourth choices. I mean, this is it. This is an original Yitzhak Tarkai. Yitzhak Tarkai was one of the world's greatest figurative painters of all time. He died in 2012. Yitzhak Tarkai came on my show. I got to spend two and a half days with him. Here is his picture, Wilson. Yitzhak Tarkai was an amazing guy. He was born in a small town called Sabatica, Yugoslavia. He was right on the Hungarian border. Great guy. Unfortunately, during World War II, the Germans came through his town and Tarkai and his family are Jewish. They came to his house and took him to the Mathisal death camp. Fortunately for the world, he was saved. He, his job at age 12 at the Mathisal concentration camp, one of the most horrible of all concentration camps, was throw dead bodies on a cart. Fortunately, a combination of Bradley and Patton's armies liberated his concentration camp and he immigrated to Israel where he became one of the world's most famous figurative artists. He was buried later, once he died, he was buried on the Boulevard of Heroes. Now, to give you an idea, here is prior to his death. I printed this two years before he died. A large Tarkai, 158,000, acrylic on canvas, a mid-size like the one I'm holding up right now, 84,000. Yitzhak Tarkai would fly everywhere doing shows. He was he even told me he was getting a little tired of it. He would fly to Singapore a lot in Japan. They loved his work around the world. Here's a picture of me and Tarkai with a Tarkai behind a skinny berry. That's right, Barry, you look great. 
You really think so? Yes. That's me adding the voice. You can jump in whatever you want. <laughs> Nobody mentioned it. Uh, anyway, Yitzhak Tarkai was a legend. And he was so amazing of an individual. The last day I spent with Yitzhak Tarkai, he took his wristwatch off, and underneath his wristwatch was the, was, uh, Wilson was the Mathisau death camp number they gave him. And I asked him on the very last day before he flew from LA back to Israel, and then he had to go to Japan, I said, does that, are you ever haunted by that? Those memories of your family and the concentration camp? And he got probably the best answer I've ever seen in my life. He got very stern, looked me eye to eye and says, no, Barry, I will not let that happen. If I think about them for one second, one second, they win. They will never win. That's why you always see me drawing and sketching. If even a thought of it enters my mind, I do something else. It's Akhtarkai, 1935 to 2012. That is an original oil, I'm sorry, acrylic on canvas. It comes with a Park West registration number from 51106, the appraisal. The appraisal was written six years before he died. In, 20, in 2006, when this appraisal was written, they valued the painting at $20,400. And that is Albert Scaglione's signature. In 2012, he died and prices tripled and quadrupled. Berea Tarkai has had some record auctions. They love him in China, they love him in Japan, they love him in the United States, they love him in Singapore. A current fair retail, if I'm not mistaken, let me put my glasses on, should be at least $100,000, maybe more. Why? Because you have one, two, three, figures in this piece. You have a beautiful outdoor scene through the window. Park West auctioneers, I don't want to get in trouble, I don't want to get Ashley in trouble with Mr. Scaglione again, but uh, paintings like this would sell for way more than $100,000 on cruises. I mean, it would not surprise me, Berea Tarkai, via their agent, was telling me they had some sales in the seven and eight hundred thousand dollar range for certain paintings. So folks, this is an amazing Tarkai. And he even named it, Tarkai named this himself, a thought-filled moment. While you're thinking about this, I'm not going to charge you 100,000, 90 or 80, 70, 60 or 50,000. What I want you to do is just take nine minutes, eight minutes. Do you have it ready, Matt? I want to show the Yitzhak Tarkai documentary where we sent Robert Jolly to Jerusalem to film him in his studio. And this is, in a funny way, Yitzhak Tarkai talking to you from beyond the grave. He was a great man. Take a look at this.
was uh, years ago, some woman come to my show in San Francisco and she told me, hi, it's very nice to meet you, Mr. Tarkadjatsan. And then he said, thank you very much for your art. And uh, she want to go. And then I asked her, why you thank me? You, you bought this piece. I'm the painter, I do my job, and you, you buy it. Why you thanks me? And she told me the picture is hanging in the coffee corner in, in uh, her house. And every morning, when she drink a coffee, she, she watch the piece, and she is so happy. And this is the reason she thanked me, because it's like uh, I give her the good mood. So, this I do for people, I hope. The best place to be in staying is Tel Aviv. I love Tel Aviv. I think this is the one of the best, 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 best city in the world. You have everything in this city. It's a not a small city, but it's a very nice city. I live in Holon because I need to, to, to put my head to sleep, but this is only for the usual things. That means, but I, what I like, really, this is Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv I like because it's, a, it's always boiling. The life, life is boiling, really. And you can't find what you saw yesterday. Today is not there. It's changed in the, always. When I start to work and I finish my sketch on the canvas, when I start to paint, I'm not thinking about the colors. The color is colors is coming. This is not uh, after some plane. How oh, what uh, in this corner? What in other corner? I put the first uh, first paint on the canvas, and then the other ones is coming uh, to compare the, to the before paints. I am optimistic, very optimistic. It, this is the best way to, to survive. For me, this is the, the heaven. Now, I'm old man and I can uh, do everything. And I wake up and I, I get out from the bed by myself and don't need helps. Up to now, I, I hope. And uh, what I need anymore. So this makes me happy, yes. <laughs> and then everything is a gift after this. Really? This is my op optimistic way, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do everything. I paint women. I paint men, I paint children, I paint landscapes, still life, everything. But the most popular, I think because the people love much more the woman subject. It's some mistake to thinking about it, Starka is a uh, love woman and they paint. I love women, okay, but uh, this is not the reason. <laughs> they prefer to see exhibitions with a woman, the people, they give the way to the gallery what to exhibit. They have landscapes, uh, still life, and the most of the exhibition is uh, with, uh, with women. So why? Because they know the people, the population is like the woman subject. I am very young, so I can wait to be a in in better class of artist 
First, I think you must to, you have to by self to feeling this. If it's good or not, if you satisfy with yourself or not. If not, you have to work and work to be better. If you're happy what you do, be happy. Don't worry. <laughs> but to coming to this very delicate point, where are you? What is your uh, place on the map of the art? I don't know. It's very difficult. I think it's a good feeling when you sell some piece in good price. Yes. Why not? That means the other side is very satisfied with, with your work. I, God help me, I'm a good side and the people want to buy it. Up to now, I don't know what will be later. But I hope it will be good. It will be good. Folks, that was Yitzhak Tarkai, one of the greatest figurative artists that ever walked the earth, lived and died. A story that is so compelling. And this is one of, if not the prettiest original, acrylic on canvas I have ever seen. Take a look at this. Folks, it comes once again with a 2006 comp appraisal from Albert Scaglione, director of Park West Galleries, where they appraised it for 20000 in 06. But that was six years before he died. You know, now folks, I'll tell you what I can do. I mean, this is a hundred thousand dollar painting, at least. Eighteen thousand. And this painting can be yours. That is an original one of a kind. Yeah, your price eighteen thousand, Matt. I mean this is as good as it gets, as rare as it gets. Yitzhak Tarkai, I knew he was important, but if I had any idea what I know now, I would have asked so many more questions the two and a half days I got to spend with him. I mean, we got to talk about a lot of stuff, but the life he lived, and you don't want to talk to, you know, uh, a guy that survived a Mathisau death camp where his job at age 12 was to throw dead bodies on a cart. And this is an amazing painting. So, who's calling about this piece? Do we have anybody online for this? Let's see. Folks, this is a once in a lifetime purchase. This is real art. This is an artist that sells in Japan, Taiwan, China, Japan, world famous when he was alive. He did, and he didn't, he did not complain about anything, but he just told me sometimes, one minute you're in Japan, one minute you're in LA, then you're back to Israel and back here and back there. This is a one of a kind original. 
It's not a silk screen. I have Tarkai silk screens. This is an original Tarkai. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm thinking about this. Patty, do you have a, a pad? Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I want this piece too bad. I want it so much I... this piece too much so I, I must sell it uh, big camera too over there uh, I want this piece too much that's a royal hand embellished Michael Schofield but watch this oh. this is too cheap I'm gonna be kicking myself if I sell it for this Wilson, I'm going to be very upset. Nobody in the free world anywhere could buy this Tarkai at this price. This is the cheapest. I don't even know if I want to. I'll tell you what. Patty is available. Juliet is available. Ashley's here. On this? On what? Yes, I'm walking over. Who is your collar? Mr. F. Mr. F. I don't want to show you this because I want this painting too bad. He's going to say yes too fast, Ashley. Watch this. If he doesn't say yes, I can't help anybody. That's the cheapest in the galaxy. All right. I just gave a price. Oh, look at that. I am standing 8 feet, 10 feet, 20 feet. This is a perfect Tarkai. It's got, this is a $100,000 plus painting. Signed Yitzhak Tarkai, a cert from Albert Scaglione of Park West. What does he say? Okay. Well, the first one, I lowered the price from 18000 So... Under that 18000 if you can just say call for secret off-air price, you will get a deal of a lifetime. I don't want to sell it at that price. I'm sitting here thinking, why would I even write that price down? You've had that emotion before, Patty. Like, why did I do that? Especially in that Kinstabi painting. Yeah. Folks, uh, camera two, I'm only going to give this a minute or two. I wrote down a price so cheap, I'm actually hoping I get to keep it because that price cannot be replaced anywhere in the world, ever, at that price. It's too cheap. I'm kind of upset that I even offered it that price. If you want to know the price, call up right now. It's way too, it's, excuse my language, little boys and girls, earmuffs, earmuffs. The price I just gave them is too damn cheap. It makes me think I'm an idiot. And I know I'm an idiot, but I'm a bigger idiot than I thought because this is one of the most valuable pieces of art I have acquired in the last year and a half. And to price it that cheap. This is too cheap. This is the best painting I have bought. I would insure this. I've seen a lot of great art in my life. This is a perfect painting. There's nothing even close to this. I'm one of those many people like Wilson the waiting line to see the Mona Lisa that's dinky. I actually touched the Matisse, the dance and the painting moved. And the Hermitage, I thought they could get mad at me. They didn't. What do they say, Patty? 
Juliet, we got a couple of people. Are they interested at that price? Okay. Well, I am going to move this painting over. What's that? I put it right on this one. You did it. I might push it. Oh, well, hang on. Yeah, here is a very, very, very rare rail. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. This is as rare as they come. Now, Royo, Jose Royo is one of the world's greatest artists and he's a Spanish master painter and I just want to show you a few things on that because this piece right here is so rare the addition of this piece give me one second La Jolla the panel edition, they had 225. The HC edition, Horse de Commerce, the Friends of the Artist, he only did six. What made this edition different is all of this was hand painted on afterwards by Jose Royo. Now, the Royo market has gone up and up and up. Here is Mediterraneo. I used to sell that in 2008 and 9. By 2020, it was 18,500 for a piece. I could have sold a lot cheaper. They're all sold out. Here is El Campo. It was in 2014. 8,500, now it's 19,500. Now right here, for this one that I'm getting ready to show you, La Jolla, look at this. The regular panel edition, of, this is on panel, that signed and numbered was sold out at 4,500. This is different than the panel edition because this is the friend of artists that he only did six of. That he hand painted that on top of the panel. And I don't know, I'm trying to remember what the graphics say. We have that up at... What is it? 8,500 at minimum. Folks, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start an auction on this. Oh, that is oh, that is rare. There, he only did six of them. It's number two of six. I'm going to make this so cheap. If you don't buy it, I can't help. 2000 to open. $200 increments once we get it. Number two of six. That Jose Royo master Spanish painter totally hand embellished the entire face that's crazy any interest
Ashley, can you hand me the other rail right there? This is called soul. <laughs> Don't be messing with my soul. <laughs> Uh huh. That's what you get. It bit you, yeah. Now, this is completely hand embellished by Jose Royo. And just to show you, if he hadn't hand embellished it, it would have been the gallery price $3,000. Fourteen years ago, unembellished. This is completely pastelled by Jose Royo. Royo is a master Spanish painter. His work is so hard to get. It's a large piece too. Tell you what, it's getting quiet in here. Ashley, don't get mad. I'm going to do something so stupid. 1500 to open. This is 9000 everywhere else. The whole top of this beautiful lady has been hand embellished by Royo. This is st stunning. Oh, I got some great art here tonight. Got some great coins, too. Any interest in this? Okay. I'm going to move the Royal right back here. And uh, I am going to bring up a Diani Pino. Pino? was one of the greatest Italian painters. Unfortunately, he died in 2010. Died 12 years ago. And what is so amazing about this Pino here is It is number one of the edition. Number one of 295. Most Pino editions. Like here's one for 4,750. It ain't number one. Here's one right here for 4,800. It's not number one. This is number one by Diani Pino, Italian master painter. He paid. On the Pino is two, three, five, six. Yeah, everybody else wants 4,800 to 7,000. Tell you what, I'm just curious. I'm very, very curious. curious. Number one, he died in 2010, Diani Pino. Started zero, $200 increments. Whoever gets it, gets it. I'm losing my fight here, Wilson. I'm losing my fight. 
I mean, I'm trying to figure out if this tar guy is going to fit in my car. <laughs> Start at zero. That's number one of the edition. Matt, that's number one. The first one of the edition. I'm at zero. They want $5,000 everywhere else. Looking for an open. No open once. Number one of the edition. He died in 2010. So for him to sign and number it, this was done pre-2010. It was done when Diani Pino was alive. On a cruise ship, oh my goodness. <sighs> What do they say? We have 200, 200 looking for 400. This is number one of a Pino. And this Pino had to have been done before 2010 because he died in 2010. And to have number one of an addition, the number one signed and numbered by Pino I mean, this is eight to 10 grand on a cruise ship. I'm at $200. This hurts. $200 looking for four. Going twice. You gotta be kidding. On a Pino. All in. All said. Let me just make sure. Are they interested? No. No. Ashley, is your customer interested? What's that, Ashley? Hang on. Four hundred has been bid. This is number one of the edition. This is an eight thousand dollar Pino. It's number one. I'm at four hundred. 600 has been bid. And what is your new customer's name? And what is your new 600 going once. 600 going twice. All in. She's out. Hey, what's your new customer's name? Um, his name is Ronald. Ronald? Yeah. All in, all said, sold. Welcome to the network, Ronald. You got the deal of a lifetime. Oh, that hurt. But thank you. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to put up next. What? We can show that, yeah. Roman de Teradoff. There's an Erte. A uh, very beautiful one.
Now, Erte, Roman de Teradoff, died in 1990. He died, let me see, I just had it. He lived to be 98. And he was an originally a fashion designer. He was born in right on the Russian border. He immigrated from Russia to Paris, Paris to New York. He was a fashion designer. He made it to 98. What? He worked in Hollywood. Yeah, you, you've seen the Erte Museum. It is down here in Hollywood. There's actually, I don't know if it's still open, but look at that. This is, you get, oh, BC 2352, 15,000 in the Erte book. Watch this. That is a beautiful Erte, too. His real name wasn't Erte. His real name was uh, Roman de, de Tertoff, but he took an initial from every letter in his name and became Erte. He dominated. I mean, Erte was about as famous as you could get, and... Uh, they kept publishing books, Erte at 80, Erte at 90, Erte at 95, and then he died. But, uh, so folks, if you're out there, what's my cost on this, Ashley? What's my cost on this? Someone tell me, because I want somebody to get, this is at the ball, is the name of this. Look at that, it's got all the, oh, Erte at the ball. What are you? Folks, I'm going to make some with deal of a lifetime. $800 to open, $100 increments. That is a $15,000 Erte. Been a strange night. And uh, the strange, there are two strange things happening tonight. I don't mind the Royos not selling because Royo always sells. I do not mind keeping that in inventory. The thing that's the most, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. If anybody's interested in the Erte, give me a call. Now. Two things. I'm going to take this down. Folks, you stay. Well, my soul needs to stay. Because if it leaves too soon, you're going to have to finish the show. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> All right. Always lift with the knees. <laughs> Tough mutter. All right. This is one of the best deals I can give anybody. I have been sitting here in between items and when I run the docudrama thinking how can I fit this in my car because I cannot get another one of these this is an original acrylic on canvas done by Yitzhak Tarkai now while I have you here Ashley and you're in such good shape can you turn this painting around so they can read what's on the back? And you don't have to just hold it up. I'll get Wilson to get the right here, Wilson. Albert Scaglione, appraisal done 511-06, six years before Yitzhak Tarkai died, he valued it at 20400 six years before he died. 
You can swing it around now. Berea, his wife, sales have gone through the roof. They're almost out. <coughs> she has been selling mini Tark eyes that she had left for well over 100000 I lowered this all the way down to 18000 and I said, call for a special, special, special price. If you ever wanted a unique, one of a kind, not unique, a one of a kind original by Yitzhak Tarkai, call the operators for the secret price. Patty, I'm trying to sell this so I don't take it home. Because this is one of the prettiest Yitzhak Tarkai originals acrylic on canvas. With all the bells and whistles, a letter and appraisal from Albert Scaglione six years before he died. You had a couple people thinking about it. Juliana, who is your, who is your person thinking about it? Mr. C. Mr. C. Ashley, you had somebody thinking about it. Yeah. Who? Because this is one of the prettiest pieces of art I have acquired in the last five years. And I acquired it at a very good price. I'm passing the savings on to you. So, this is amazing. I want this painting. I cannot compete with my customers. Bob Hallam taught me that over a coin 32 years ago. Any interest in it? Tell you what. And this is it. This is it. I shouldn't even do this. Patty, Ashley, Juliet, to the few people who were thinking about it, this is below bottom. I got this in my hand. This is it. It's you or me time, folks. Yes. 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 Show that to Ashley. That is crazy. I just lowered it to the final low price and it's between you and me. And this is, this is, I, at the prices, that's a, an original. Yitzhak Tarkai painted in 04, 05, appraised in 06. And I just lowered the price and the first one that says yes, I don't want to sell at that price. This is one of the prettiest pieces of art I have ever come across by Yitzhak Tarkai. It's unbelievable at that price. <laughs> now, All right, hang on. We got a couple calls. I'm walking over here. Hang on. And what? Uh, who's your caller? He's, oh. About that, I don't not. I did, James, give me a minute on that offer, but I think 
that, that counter I just gave. Give me a second, James. And while everybody's looking at the Turk eye, because I want this, this is one of the nicest Turk eyes I've ever come across. Oh my goodness, been doing this for 32 years. James, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking. Um, who was thinking? Who 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 did, who were you talking with before? Uh, now Dennis is asking his wife. To who? Dennis and his wife. What do they say at that price? He's talking to his wife. He's talking to his wife. Yep. All right, hang on. Okay. I kind of want this. I've lowered this so low. I'm actually probably losing money and uh, this is this is one of the greatest paintings I have come across in a long time. Oh, that's gorgeous! Every inch of this, Yitzhak Tarkai knew what he was doing. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You won't see this again, ever. So. While you're thinking about that, biggest, second biggest surprise of the night, I still have two of these coins left. This is a very, very, very rare coin. The 1913 D $20 St. Gaudens graded MS64. It is absolutely a monumental coin. They only minted 393,500 of them at the Denver Mint. That is it. So few of those survived. They were transported in railroad cars and bags. And just to show you some of the comps on this coin, I want to show you something. Here is PCGS's website or somebody on eBay selling one for $7,800, which is a very fair price for the 1913D. NGC statistics say the 1913D in 64 is it is so rare there it is how did they how did they phrase it only one percent of the 13 deals here I'll, I'll I'll read the words they had so give me a second here is an NGC coin. For $6,750, a very, very fair price. And I, I have two left, and we'll put the graphics up on those. Is there a Melvin price for the coin? Yes. Melvin needs one of those. I'm coming. I'm, tell Melvin I'm moving slow. I'm moving slow. I didn't trip. That is as rare as it gets in $20 St. Gaudens. You see $7,800 for the same type of coin, a PCGS MS64. He should grab that. This is one of the rarest coins I've ever had on the show. What do you see? OP does only 393,500 on the Tarkai 
I only have two left. I'm happy to keep one of them if I sell one. The Tark I don't understand. I am taking that home with me. It is hanging in my house forever. I don't want to ever compete with customers, but I've given the absolute rock bottom price on Yitzhak Tarkai. Yeah, will we lower the price to on this? On the graphics? 44, 44, 55, 55, 4485, yes. And the official description that I got was NGC Pop rep, uh, reports of uh, is less than 1% of the 1924. I mean, this is so rare. It is 99 times rarer than a 1924, basically. Only 393,500 ever minted. And that's in Denver, so they traded, uh, they moved on trains in bags where coins beat against each other. It's amazing that I have two and six, four left. What? Yeah. Uh. Hope everybody's watching because those coins and this Tarkai, this is museum grade. And I want to thank everybody. I'm running out of time. I am down to my last two 1913 Ds. You'll see a little D. And Denver was never known in the 19 teens as a great place for a coin to be minted. And, I, you know, sloppy was a word that some people used. So to get them an MS64, unheard of. And I got to move on. Any calls on this because I got 11 minutes left. What do they say? Oh, that's beautiful coin. Okay. I am going to move this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. I got it. Now, for some, this auction fell through on the Steve Kaufman right here. This is number one of the edition. Number one of 200 SAK Steve Kaufman, an amazing pop artist. I showed you pictures with B.B. King and him, Bruce Willis and him, 
and uh, it's like a twelve thousand dollar edition. And this is BC two three five four. First one that calls. A thousand bucks. It's yours. I have two incredible Michael Schofield. Yeah, you're you're a thousand dollars. And I want to thank you. I only got a few minutes left. Here. This is a Michael Schofield. We're on the back. He wrote where this was. Take a look at that. Stone wall. You see this throughout the south. One of my favorite Memories by Michael Schofield. This is stunning. And folks, let me just say this about these two 1913 D's I have left to. Uh, just get me on camera too. Folks, I've been doing this for 30 two years. I can tell you, I can't promise it, but I think you are going to be amazed at what rare day gold coins do in the future. It's already starting. And anybody that believes the inflation rate is whatever they say it is, they're crazy. It's a lot worse. And anybody that thinks inflation's under control, uh, it's not. And I think what you're going to see happen with inflation, especially coin and fine art prices, in the next three years is going to startle you. You're going to see coins like this 1913D at 4,485 be trading for 14 and 15,000. Just my guess. I can't promise that. I lived through it in the 70s, and I was too or too young to really appreciate and capitalize on it. Made some money, but I was only 15 and 16, Patty. But take a look at that Schofield right here. Tell you what, on the back he wrote a stone wall and gate. These are all over the south and the, no something, oh they are uh, made from stone. Clear field, look at that, that is one of the prettiest Schofields on the planet. Late night deal. You want a great Schofield 1700 to open? Right now. I've never, I paid more. I paid more. But that, the good news is I got it. Bad news is I'm off the air in six minutes. Melvin, what do you say? And Melvin, you got to get one of those 1913 Ds. I know what you bought. That is that is hands down one of the best buys. This Schofield at 1700 to open. The Tarkai. I'm going to put this Tarkai back up too, because if it don't sell, it's going home with me tonight. That is one of the best deals in a market where these pangs are going for five and ten times what I'm offering it to you guys for. <clears throat> so, that auction is over now because nobody bid. Can you take that down, Patty or Ashley? I'm going to put this back up for the last three minutes. This 
is gold in my mind. This is one of the greatest Yitzhak Turk guys I have ever acquired. Take a look at that BC2345. And I want to thank you. I am down to my last four minutes. If there's anything I can work a deal on, call me. And those 1913 D's, Melvin has to get one of those, Ashley. I have a gut feeling who's buying those and what's going to be happening to them. So if Melvin has to make a choice, definitely get one of those 13 D's. And I lowered and lowered the tar guy. I got a price lower than I even wanted to go. I didn't, never thought I'd have to go that low. That is as beautiful as it comes on an original acrylic on canvas by the late Yitzhak Tarkai. Three minutes left. Got a couple people on the phone. Now, I, I tell you what, I'm going to walk over here and hang on. He's got to get one. I only got two left. What, what does Melvin say? Okay. Is he interested in the guy? Okay. That's fine. Tomorrow. Okay. So he wants me to leave the guy here. I was going to take it home. All right, well, I will thank you folks. The 1913D uh, is an amazing coin. I am amazed I have two left. Write that price down uh, on the coin. We'll get that on the camera. Write that down. Pull it out six months from now. I got 20 seconds? Hey, we love you. We ship fast. Ashley ships the coins. Thank you. Buford, don't kick that dog. What's that? 20 seconds. Hey, we love you. And I want to thank you. I'll see you next Wednesday night. Be safe. Buford, don't kick that dog. We know where you live, Buford. Bye.